Remco van Vliet, a third-generation florist from just outside of Amsterdam, moved to New York City when he was 18, bringing his love for flowers with him. He began working right away, hauling boxes in Manhattan's flower market. Hey, Cass. Good morning. Hey, man. When he was 26, he and his brother, Cass Trapp, started Van Vliet and Trapp, an event design company. At 34, Remco still finds the flower market as exciting as he did when he first arrived in New York. The New York City flower market gets this amazing variety of flowers from all over the world. It's a great luxury having this uh, amazing variety. It allows me to be very creative. Each week, he scours the market for branches and flowers for New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Wow. What is perfect are these beautiful, beautiful cherry blossoms. These branches have been all farm-raised, so it's not that somebody went in, into nature with a machete and, and cut all of these down. These are raised uh, especially for the uh, flower industry. This is called Song of India. It's very beautiful, it curves nicely, it comes from Puerto Rico, and they're very animated. This is Snowball Viburnum, it comes out in the springtime. This is the first cut of the season, locally grown. And then, on the other hand, we have these snowballs. These are grown in a greenhouse in Holland. They're very beautiful. They're a little bit taller. So for my purposes in the Met, uh, I think I'm going to use these. As the museum's event designer, he creates towering 10-foot tall arrangements for the Great Hall. The tradition of fresh flowers at the Met began in 1969 with an endowment from Lilo Atchison Wallace, a co-founder of Reader's Digest and one of the museum's biggest benefactors. The first thing the guests that visit the museum see when they come in is these beautiful flower arrangements. So it right away sets the people in a certain mood. Every Monday when the museum is closed, Remco works his magic. He starts with tiered containers that are covered with turkey wire, and then he adds flower food and water. So I cut this in a 45 degree angle. It's a thick piece, and then I give it a vertical cut up the stem. And I pull my shears apart so they split open. It allows for the branch to drink water much faster. First I start with my thickest branches and tallest branches and then I fill in the gaps. In this way I'm able to maximize my space and make the arrangement as big as possible. So here I have a Song of India. The botanical name is Reflexa. I'm adding that to these beautiful branches just to fill in the holes of the arrangement. And it adds a nice neutral tone. Let's cut it a little bit in a 45 degree angle. Strip some more foliage, so the foliage isn't in the water. When foliage is submerged, it creates a lot of bacteria. And the bacteria make the flowers die real fast. The third element I'll be using is Snowball Viburnum. It's very important for viburnum because it drinks so much water that you take some of the side shoots off, like I'm doing now. You see these big leaves, those all take off too. So the actual flower gets more water and in return it will last a lot longer. Now look at these tulips. They're marine French tulips from Nice in southern France and they're basically Dutch bulbs grown in southern France. And now they're twice the height. Look at how tall they are. So the better the climate is, the taller the flowers grow. All the information to grow and all the nutrients are in the stem. It's a bulb flower. So even after you cut it, it grows. All tulips do that. And the finishing touch right there. I think we're done. It's very elegant, very understated. I'm never a big fan of having too many colors together. You have to have a little respect for nature. Flowers are beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to work with. Every day is different for me and I'm always working with beautiful things and I'm always making people happy, which is great.